Catherine Anaya and welcome to My Home Group TV. In this My Lifestyle episode, I talk to a green thumb expert about farm to table, why it's a growing trend across the country and how you can use flowers in your food. You've probably heard of farm to table, meaning fresh, locally grown or produced food is served directly at, say, a restaurant like this one, fellow Osteria and Pizzeria. The restaurant is located on the Sky Song campus in South Scottsdale, Arizona, and is known for its authentically sourced farm to table menu, which boasts a beautiful garden right outside its front door. Green Thumb expert Justin Rohner is responsible for the garden and its edible flowers that end up in many of the dishes on the restaurant menu. Well, we've basically grown everything that these restaurants like to have as little specialty items that are included in the recipes so that they can feed it the freshest possible. I mean, that's one of the major reasons to bring the farm a lot closer to the table is so we can get the freshest ingredients, absolutely the best flavor, the most ripe, and the highest nutrition. So what are the benefits of farm to table? Well, number one, it's about food safety stuff. I mean, you want the safest food that you can get. You want, people don't really trust their food. I mean, even organic has got some challenges now. And so we want the freshest, most reliable stuff that we can get that's not contingent upon all this other global issues. And so if you got it right outside the door, you've got number one, the freshest ingredient. It's not being shipped for hundreds or even thousands of miles. In other words, you know it was picked the same day. And that's a totally different flavor profile than you're typically used to in, from your grocery store. The grocery store has continued to train us to accept blander and blander food that has good color. And that's not exactly what we enjoy eating. And that's not what our body needs in terms of nutrition. And so you have to eat a lot more of it to get the nutrients you need. But then when you do the farm to table, you got the freshest stuff with all the nutrients ready and acceptable to your body so it can be digested. You need a lot less of this to get a lot more out of it. We asked Justin to show us five edible flowers grown right in the garden outside fellow Osteria that not only thrive in the desert heat, but thrive in your food too. The first is the begonia, which Justin says offers a pop of flavor and color to any salad. Now this is a flower that you can actually grow indoors. A lot of people do this. It's a beautiful flower indoors, but you can also grow it outside in, again, a very shaded environment, what we call an E microclimate. So it gets a little bit of filtered light. And this one, in terms of its flavor profile, kind of fits the bill for a lot of the citrus that we don't have readily available through the summertime. Like we can't get lemons, mm -hmm. but, but try that little guy. And it's got a little heart. And it looks pretty. like a little heart. It's a pretty little flower. So think mm -hmm. lemon and what do you it's got? Tart. It's tart. Mm -hmm. And the leaves are just as tart. And so they can be thrown into a salad with a nice lemon vinaigrette kind of thing. And so you got that nice little pop of color, beautiful color, and the whole entire thing is edible, provided that you can trust how you grew it. Exactly. Because a lot of these things, the begonias that you'll buy in the store to grow at home, a lot of them are grown with systemic pesticides, which goes right inside of every cell in the plant. Mm -hmm. And that's not good for you. No. It's really not good for the plant either. So we recommend growing it yourself, making sure that you have that trusted source right outside your door. Give it three months and he says you'll end up with a nice sustainable supply that'll grow year round. Another edible flower is the hibiscus. Justin likes using the Jamaican hibiscus. The leaves are great for salad and the petals for red zinger tea. And the traditional hibiscus, which is a great add to sandwiches and side dishes. So the leaves are from one type of hibiscus called the Jamaican hibiscus or the yamaka. And that one has, a, you can actually eat the leaves. You gotta try one of these. This is also, we're kind of still in the same tart family. So just be ready for it. Mm. Yeah, so that's got a nice tart, tart flavor and that's the leaf. So you it's just really imagine throwing that. Refreshing. Yeah, and it's crisp. Uh -huh. See, that's the other thing. Now these things do not travel well. So if I don't pick it the same day and use it the same day, mm -hmm. it's gonna get all crazy floppy and it's not something that you're gonna find in a grocery store because it's not available. Right. It's not gonna look as good. Now this other variety, this is another variety of hibiscus. This is more your tr traditional tropical hibiscus, but try that petal and that's basically how we like to use those. We'll just eat the petals. Little crunch to it, a little more on the sweet side. It is. And these things, great little add to the salad, and you can tell it's 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 good. There's a lot of nutrients in here too. There's vitamin C, there's vitamin E, there's enzymes inside of this that are really good and helpful for your body and all the all the things going on inside. Mm -hmm. Very so, good. Awesome, nice isn't that and fun? refreshing and light. Exactly, and it's just got so many different uses. The Jamaican hibiscus, when it blooms, it actually creates a roselle and it's the same stuff they make red zinger tea out of. Mm -hmm. And that's a really cool ingredient. You can add it to anything. Next up, what's called the Society Garlic, known for its spicy, crisp, and crunchy flavor. So this is actually Society Garlic. And the Society Garlic, you see a nice, beautiful purple flower. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds us of the amethyst. There's a lot of cool kind of things that are growing out there in, in uh, California. There's some varieties of this that are huge, but they don't taste like this one does. Mm -hmm. Now this one, 
We like to throw these in salads. So try that little flour. So literally we just eat the whole thing. Now this again, remember garlic. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And this one doesn't- I thought you were kidding. Um, no, I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. So it'll definitely clear your sinuses out. It's mm -hmm. one of those things that it's a wonderful add and it's fresh. So you didn't have to cook it to get the flavor, mm -hmm. which is also really neat. Yeah, it's still burning, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's good stuff. How long does it take to grow something like this? These ones take about 60 days to really get from the cluster and you usually buy them as a little plant. Yeah, it's still going. <laughs> so you buy them at a, as a little plant, they'll divide and then they'll just keep growing and they'll grow for you year round. You'll get the blooms in the spring and in the fall and even through the summer. So That is so great. It's really neat. Because it's a beautiful plant. it's flavorful and it's pretty. It's super pretty. And so these things, any of your garlic dishes, any any type of dish that, you know, Asian dishes with a lot of garlic in them and stuff like that, good Italian dishes, you can just throw that on as a fresh pop. And obviously it's got a lot of flavor to it as well. The stems, the leaves also all are edible. And uh, it's just a really fun add to the garden and a great add to any crazy salad you might I don't do. think In that same garlic flavored family, but more on the sweet mild side, Justin likes the onion chive. You kind of see how they create these kind of papery little tops, mm -hmm. make these nice little puff balls on top. But these little buds, it's got a nice just little, a little yeah, bud. just try a little bud. It's not gonna be as powerful as that last one. But what do you think? That's yummy. It's got a nice little fun flavor to it. And I like what I like to do with those is we'll actually pull these down and then I'll just cut across there and I'll have all these little buds that I can then sprinkle in the salad. And it adds a little bit of that crunch to it without having to add the glutens and stuff like that. So I don't need to add any croutons. I can still add and create a little bit more crunch, a little bit different texture in my salad by using that little guy. Now these are the buds. A lot of Asian dishes will use these buds. They're a little more sweet. So I'll have you try it, but it's, so the whole bud and the, the stem on this little guy. The whole thing. Yep, so this is a chive bud. So these are garlic chive buds. Mm, you're right. These things roast up really nice, so you can saute these. It's really good to put in a stir fry. So any of the type of stir fries that you want that more garlicky kind of flavor, but not one that's gonna last forever. And finally, there's what Justin calls the basil flowers, sweet and savory clusters of basil flavor. But the whole bud from everything up from the stock, you can eat all that and you can either cook it, so you can cook with it. There's a lot of good oils inside of there, the basil oils, or we can use them fresh Right on a salad, you can kind of see it's got just a pretty little, mm -hmm. pretty little look to it that you can just kind of throw as a garnish, but very edible and I'm add a few amazed. leaves to go with it. Justin says there are hundreds of flowers you can eat right out of your own garden. In fact, he offers an edible flower guide on his website with tips for adding them to your food and recipes. Justin teaches online classes so you can learn how to grow your own. You can learn more at agriscaping.com. Remember to subscribe to MHGTV at MHGTV.com and you can watch all of our videos on the My Home Group YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment while you're there. I'm Katherine Anaya. I'll see you next time.